Hello everyone, this is part 5 on how to make an RPG or adventure game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I will be finishing the player interactions with the stone and merchants in order to get resources. I will also add gold to our inventory. Again, I will not be creating a fighting system in this tutorial or this tutorial series because it is a bit too much for this series. However, I can make a separate video on it if enough people want me to. Also, I will post this game on my Scratch account, so if you want to take a look, check out my Scratch profile, link is in the description below. Also, if you haven't seen parts 1 through 4 yet, also check them out in the description below. Anyways, let's work on the player interaction with the stone. So right now, if the player goes up to the stone, and we press space, it does nothing. And that is because the stone is only part of our background and foreground, and it's not an interactable object yet. So let's make the bottom part of the stone part of the interactable object. So let's go to our interactable object sprite, go to costumes, and let's create a new costume. Now let's drag this costume from our background sprite onto the costume of our interactable object sprite, which is going to be our stone, and then place it down and let's delete the trunks and let's reposition the stone in the center of the costume or somewhere near it and then now we can delete our stone from the background and now in our interactable object sprite you need to set clone number to 5 and then create clone of myself which I already did so the stone is going to be clone number 5, and uh, now scroll all the way down, and then duplicate any if statement from here. I'll just do the most bottom one, and then put it at the very bottom, and then this is going to be all of our code for our stone. So let's change the clone number equals 4 to clone number equals 5, and for the if join east, west, north, south equals room, Let's change that to, um, let's see. So right now, our east, west, and north, south is 0, 0. But if we go north, then the north, south changes by 1. So now it's 0, 1. So inside of the if statement, let's type if join east, west, north, south is equal to 0, 1. And as a quick reminder, since this map, uh, the map with our stone, is to the north of this map that means when we go up into the map with our stone then north south changes by one but let's say if we go down then north south changes by negative one and then if we go right then east west changes by one and then when we go left then east west changes by negative one so it's like that and now since our stone is the fifth costume I'll just quickly rename this costume name to 5. Then, let's switch costume to 5, which is a costume to our stone. So if it's in the correct map, then there's our stone costume. And now let's reposition it so that it's under the top part of the stone. So let's see, let's drag it around here. Alright. That is x position of 33, y position of negative 5. Okay, and we can just play around with the numbers. So let's see, let's move it up by 1. And I think that's pretty good. So now there is our stone, and it looks the exact same as before. However, now we can interact with the bottom part of the stone. So now for the interactions. Um, we have... If the distance to player is less than 12, let's actually change that. So let's take this out, then go to sensing, and grab a touching. So if touching player, and the space key is pressed, then let's change the stone by 1, because you get 1 stone. And now let's try it out. And it's... The bottom part of the stone is touching the player. Now we press space. And as you see over here, our stone increases by 1. Alright, that's great. So 
So now that it works, we don't need our east-west and north-south variables. We can just hide them. And the next thing we want to do is to make the stone found text show. Because for our apples, if we get one, then we get an apple found text right over here. And we want the same thing for our stone. So let's go to our text. And in the costumes, let's create a new one or duplicate this. Then let's change this to stone found. And let's highlight the text and make it all uh, gray. So I think a dark gray works fine. I like this. Yep. And now when we interact with the stone, we want to broadcast a new message, right? So let's drag in a broadcast. Click the drop down menu. Click new message. Let's call this stone. Now let's drag this inside or between the wait until space pressed for clone number equals 5. Remember, that's our stone. And now for our text, let's click that. And all right, we already have a message thing for our apple for when the text shows up. Now we want the same thing for the stone. So let's just duplicate this. Now let's change the apple to stone. And also, since we have two costumes now, we need to switch to the correct costume whenever the player interacts with either the apple tree or the stone. So let's go to looks, drag a switch costume to, and then whenever um, the text receives the apple message, then it switches costume to costume 1, which is apple found, and when it interacts with the stone, then it should switch to costume 2. So now let's try it out. Let's first try the apple tree. Okay, that works. The text shows up and it's in the correct costume. Now let's go to our stone. And there's our text. So now the stone works. Uh, next thing up is the merchant. So when we go inside the house, we see our merchant and we can trade apples for gold, right? And when we press space, then it works. We decrease an apple and we increase a gold. Press space again, lose an apple, gain a gold. But however, if we press again, we can still trade an apple for gold, even though we had zero apples. And our counter does not really work anymore. So let's fix that. Uh, let's go to our interactable object sprite and go to the merchant clone, which is clone number equals four. That's our merchant. And we want to add an extra check for um, when we interact with it. We want to check if the player has any apples. So let's add on to this and statement over here. So let's grab an and operator. And then let's grab an equals operator. Drag it onto the right of the and operator. And then let's go to data, grab apples, and check. Or actually, we don't need the equals. We need an greater than operator. So let's check if the apples is greater than zero. So if we have one or more apples. Now let's put this instead of this and, the left side of the and. Now let's drag this entire block back inside of the if statement. So I just pretty much just um, added this extra check. So now this checks if the distance to the player is less than 12 and if the space key is pressed and the player has at least one apple. And in this case, the player does not have any apples. So if you try pressing space, this does not work. However, after we get an apple, and then we go back to the house and to the merchant, then we press space. Then, as you can see here, we get one gold and our apples decrease to zero. So now that works. All right, um, next thing I want to do is to add the gold to our inventory because we have this gold variable here and it looks sort of plain and boring and it doesn't really fit with our current inventory. So let's go to our inventory sprite, go to costumes, and let's first add the gold like picture to the inventory. 
So I'm just gonna grab the costume from the um, sprite. There's our gold. So I'm I'm just going to delete everything around the gold. And there we go. Now we have our gold. And I'm gonna move it up a bit. And now we have our gold picture over here. And we want a number counter for our gold also. So to do that, it's actually really simple. Let's just duplicate any of the apple or stone number counters. And I'm going to rename this to number gold. And all you need to do is to change any variables inside of the forever loop of the when I start as a clone. So any variables inside of it with either stone or apple, depending on which um, sprite you duplicated, and change that to gold. So if length of stone is less than digits, change a stone to gold. And also switch costume to letter digits of stone, change the stone to gold. And right now it still does not show. Oops, okay. And that is because it's in the exact same X and Y position of either one of your number counters. So I'm just going to decrease the Y, maybe to 100, and there it is. There's our stone counter. So I'm going to make maybe make it like 97, uh, maybe 98. Okay, that looks good. So there is our gold number counter. And now let's try getting some apples and trading it for gold. Let's see if it works. So we have 11 apples, and once we trade with the merchant, we get gold. There it is. Now it works. Now we have 11 gold. And now we can delete our gold variable. So the next thing I want to do is to make the player go behind the merchant. And I actually already did that. But in the last part of this series, you were unable to go behind the merchant because the entire merchant costume was part of the interactable sprite or interactable object sprite. So I'll tell you how to make the player go behind the merchant like this and then stop like right near the bottom of the merchant like that. So it's actually really simple. Just um, go to your interactable object sprite and go to your merchant costume and before I had the merchant costume like this but what you want to do is to take out a certain amount of your costume and I took out that much so from here to there and the remaining part is gonna be the area that your player can collide with so as you see here the player can collide with the bottom part of this merchant and then, um, oh yeah, okay, don't take it out yet, but what you want to do is, um, okay, is to copy this sprite, or this costume, into your foreground sprite. So you should already have a costume named Room, but if you don't, you can add it. But um, in your Room sprite, or costume, I mean, you want to copy the costume in the interactable object sprite onto the costume to the room. So just drag the sprite from here to here and then you should be able to copy it which I already did. So like this and this is where you decide how much you want to delete. So let's see, okay. So um, in my interactable object sprite I was going to delete all the way down to the player's eyes. So that much. So this is how much the player can interact with. And now if you go to the foreground, we do the opposite. We want to delete or actually keep everything, sorry. We want to keep everything that we deleted from the interactable object sprite. So since we deleted the merchant's upper body and the sign, um, then we want to keep the upper part of the merchant and the sign. So we delete the lower part of the sign and the lower part of the merchant, like that. 
And now, as you can see, we have two halves of the merchant and the sign. And this part in the foreground, um, the part that you kept, that you deleted from the interactable object, this is the part where your player can go under, as you can see here. And uh, now, the last step to do is to position this part um, in your foreground sprite to match the part in the interactable sprite. So I already positioned it correctly, but let's say I moved it around like over here, right? That's where I copied it. And then let's try it out. As you can see, the top part of the merchant is all the way over there. But we want this part to go to the bottom part of the interactable sprite. Just as a reminder, this part is the interactable sprite, and this part is the foreground. So we just want to move the foreground uh, sprite inside of the costume near or actually onto the costume of the interactable object sprite. So this requires some trial and error, but after you do it a while, let's see, this should go on top perfectly, and you should not be able to tell the difference like from before. So let's see, okay, a bit more upwards, a bit to the right also. Okay, to the left, maybe up one also. Okay, that's two up. Let's go down. Okay, down more. Okay, up more. Um, all right, and then to the right one unit. Oops, okay, too much. All right, now as you can see, the top and the bottom parts are perfectly aligned. And that's how you make the player be able to go under part of the merchant and the sign. And there you go. And it still interacts with the interactable part of the merchant. So let's test it out. Let's grab an apple. Oops, okay, grab an apple. I'll grab two. And you can still interact with the merchant. Press space, and you get one gold and lose an apple. And it works. Oops. All right, there you go. You lose an apple and you gain one gold. Also, if you feel like um, sometimes, like, I went over here and then it clicked space and it couldn't trigger anything. So if you want, like, a larger radius of, like, interaction, you can just go to your interactable sprite object, go to your merchant clone, which in my case is clone number four. Then you can just increase the distance to the player. So I'm just going to increase it from 12 to 15. And now there should be a larger range where I can interact with it. So let's try it out. I'll grab six apples. And if I press space over here, oops, okay. The range is still not large enough. I'll make it to like 18. Let's try it again, get some apples, then I press space over here. Okay, still not large enough, but I can like go here and the range is larger. <laughs> so yeah, so play around with that and actually I don't even think I need the distance to player. I think, okay, let me just try getting a touching player touching player and let's let me try um let's see okay nope it does not really work okay actually it sort of works but it doesn't work if you go on the side or behind so yeah I'd still use distance to player but just maybe increase or play around with the numbers I like maybe 15 or 12 or 18. Those all work. So yeah. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. And again, my game is shared on my Scratch profile. Link is in the description below. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. See ya.